back to the Jiggy Jaguar Show on the network. Welcome back to the program, coast to coast and border to border. It is iHeartRadio. Also, our good friends at Radio Loyalty. Tune in. We're live each and every Monday through Friday, 2 to 5 Central, 3 to 6 Eastern, and 12 to 3 Pacific. 24 7 at JiggyJaguar.com. 53 minutes after the hour, my good, close, personal, longtime friend, Dr. Jack Caravelli, joins us. And, uh, Doctor, there was a, a lot of different things that went on uh, over the last 24 hours. There's been some elections that have uh, that have taken place. What what do you make of some of the uh, some of the runoffs and some of the different decisions that uh, that were made last night when voters went to the voting booth? Yeah, well, great question, James. Uh, first, I think you know we got to go back, you know, a week or so uh, in my home state, Virginia. You know, uh, the House Majority Leader. Eric Cantor, a Republican, uh, lost in a, a primary to, a, to an unknown challenger who was, you know, really supported uh, by the Tea Party. Uh, Cantor lost, and uh, that stunned Washington. It made huge headlines, and people talked about that, really, for, for the better part of a week. Now, you know, last night, probably the, the, the one that I followed close, most closely was Thad Corcoran, uh, down in Mississippi, uh, he was, um, you know, a, a moderate and sort of establishment um, Republican senator. Uh, I, I know he's held in, you know, pretty high regard in Washington, uh, and, and he was challenged uh, very hard, again, by another uh, Tea Party candidate uh, in the Republican primary. Uh, but in this case, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Cor- Corcoran actually uh, sort of uh, edged through, so the you know the Tea Party uh, won one big one uh, against Cantor and lost one you know fairly significant one uh, against uh, Corcoran in Mississippi. Um, you know, so you know what, what what does it tell us? I think the uh, you know certainly in parts of the country and certainly within the Republican Party, uh, you know the Tea Party. You know, remains obviously active, uh, important, influential. Uh, you know, you can't win uh, every election that they, you know, try to really contest. But you know, I, I think their presence really sends a strong message uh, to the party establishment in Washington that they need to be listened to, uh, reckoned with, and you know, the core principles of the Tea Party. You know, whether one likes them or not. You know, they resonate with a lot of our uh, citizens uh, and the voters, and that they need to be taken seriously. And, you know, this really points to, uh, I think, some very interesting things that will potentially happen, not only in the midterm elections later this year for the House and Senate, uh, but then as we head toward, you know, 2016, you know, what will be the the Tea Party role in helping to shape the, you know, the Republican nominee, because I, I don't think you'll see too many Tea Party people voting for Democrats. We've got Dr. Jack Caravelli with us today here on the program. Now, uh, another story that has kind of been making its way around is this no-fly list. Apparently, uh, no-fly list violates constitutional rights as a judge. Uh, the ruling finds that no adequate method for people to challenge their placement on the list. Uh, what do you make of the no-fly list? Is is this a uh, is is this a good thing that, that a judge has has ruled that this violates constitutional rights? Or uh, it, uh, when when the founders created the Constitution, I don't think they ever envisioned uh, something like the no-fly list. <laughs> well, no, well, no, I don't think they did. Um, <laughs> And, you know, I think, James, a, a good way to match up this question on the no-fly list is the, the Supreme Court decision uh, today uh, on uh, the Fourth Amendment question of, you know, police having to uh, get warrants to search cell phones, uh, which, which, again, I don't think was part of the thinking of the founding fathers nearly 250 years ago. Uh, but it's interesting that you know, the, the Constitution and the Supreme Court, uh, interpreting the Constitution, of course, you know, can, can apply, 
you know, again, a document several hundred years old to contemporary events. And in terms of the no-fly list, uh, I, I am pleased by the, the judge's ruling. I, I think that, you know, particularly the, the phrase that you, uh, you mentioned, you know, that there's no adequate way to challenge it uh, and, and why somebody's on it is really draconian. Look, I mean, we, we all know that this is an artifact of the way the U.S. government responded after the tragic events of 9-11. You know, we, we, we get it, and we want to be safe. But, you know, again, the, you know, I think what the court is trying to do uh, in both of these cases is strike a balance between, you know, the, the government trying to protect us and carry out its proper functions, but at the same time, particularly on the, the Fourth Amendment, uh, which which really speaks to the issue of uh, unreasonable searches and seizures. Uh, you know, you, you you see the the jurists wrestling, you know, with these kinds of, of questions. And you know, it's interesting that in both cases, the you know the judiciary bodies, um, you know, sided with the freedom uh, of privacy and protections uh, and. That'll be interesting to see if it extends to, you know, more cases like this, which are bound to come in the next couple of years, uh, or, or if these are exceptions. But, uh, I mean, my, my vote is, you know, the, the government needs a way to uh, give people a chance to uh, explain and defend themselves. Uh, we are the masters of government, not the servants. Uh, so I'm, I'm pleased, actually, by, by both decisions, and... Uh, you know, we'll see how it plays out. Dr. Jack Caravelli with us today. Uh, doctor, once again, thanks for being with us and looking forward to uh, talking to you next week, my friend. Well, uh, James, it's always a pleasure. And, again, congratulations, and uh, look forward to chatting with you soon. Definitely. Well, have yourself a wonderful day. We'll talk soon, Doctor. Appreciate it. Thank you, James. Dr. Jack Caravelli with us today, and uh, we are going to take a timeout.